For the first time, Vanillaware fans in the West are able to play Princess Crown in English. Someone has finally made a fan translation of Princess Crown for the Sega Saturn. It may not be the first Vanillaware game technically, but this is the game that led to the foundation of that company. It has an interesting story of development, since it was originally being made by George Kamatani, and the company that was working on it went bankrupt. The entire team was then pulled into Atlas, started work on the game again, which was going to be a lifesome game until the direction of development changed, because Sega and Atlas were heavily investing into RPGs at the time, and on a whim, in order to ensure that his game would get picked up, George Kamatani told them it was an RPG. Princess Crown was actually a failure in terms of sales, but a critical success, a phrase we hear all too often nowadays, when even when games sell millions of copies, it wasn't until five years later, in 2002, that Vanillaware would be founded, and then another five years before their first project they worked on would be released, which was Odin Sphere. They'd worked on a previous project, but that one was picked up by another developer eventually. The game was Fantasy Earth Zero. The other game that was developed around the same time was a co-developed project called Grim Grim Grimoire, which somehow released earlier than Odin Sphere due to some production issues. Princess Crown actually did so poorly that not only was the team that he worked on the game with dissolved, but George Kamatani's career was severely damaged. Game development can be a fickle beast at times. Even when you make something great, it can bite you in the ass. And when, I, when I say severely damaged, that is not an overestimation. He spent years trying and failing to take on new projects, spending time with a company called Rakjin, and later with SCE, Sony Computer Entertainment. He ended up moving to Tokyo, and things were so dire that, in his own words, he was living off bread crusts. Princess Crown is a 2D action RPG, much like a lot of Vanillaware's games, so if you've played Odin Sphere, you'll feel right at home. You control one of four characters, play through a variety of scenarios while you'll where you'll be fighting demons, befriending dragons, and looking cool as hell doing it. The, the game's art style is very unique, especially for the time. It's on the Sega Saturn, after all, which is the premier 2D console. There are a ton of great 2D action RPGs on the Saturn, including one of my favorites from a year before this, Guardian Heroes. You might be surprised to know that Princess Crown's art style has influences in Alice in Wonderland, with George Kamatani saying that he referenced John Tenniel's illustrations when creating the art for the game. The gameplay of Princess Crown is fairly simple. You move your character along a 2D plane, attack, block, and you have access to healing items. But there's actually a decent amount of exploration as well. There will be various items that you can find as you're moving from place to place, for example by pulling fruits out of a tree, which is a really cool animation actually. Sometimes when you're rocking when you're walking through those places, all nice and peaceful, picking fruits, you'll be attacked by an enemy and combat starts. The way that the combat works almost feels like a fighting game, which makes sense considering George Kamatani spent some time at Ka Capcom. But it also has some very clear roots in RPGs as well. There's a full leveling system, the way that you move from forests to towns. Fighting various enemies definitely feels like an old-school RPG in a lot of ways. Right down to the ways that you interact with various NPCs, visit various shops, it, it definitely feels like a JRPG that's just on a 2D plane. And I think that's definitely one of the ways that the game really shines, in the characters that you meet along the way. And a lot of that probably has to do with the presentation. Every important character in the game has their own sprite that is beautifully animated in a way that we've now come to expect from Vanillaware. It's interesting to think that very few members of the team from Prin Princess Crown actually moved on to Vanillaware at all. Just goes to show you the influence that a single person can have on game development. There are a lot of different bosses that you'll encounter on your journey in Princess Crown and plenty of side quests to go through. Side quests allow you to get various upgrades, such as upgrading your sword, and even powering up your fairy friend that follows you throughout the journey. The more you power her up, the more she'll help you during battle, doing things like dropping your items, or even attacking the enemies. 
I think this is definitely a game that people who played Odin's, Odin Sphere will enjoy. You can see a lot of the ideas that eventually made their way into Odin Sphere have their origins in Princess Crown. It feels kind of like a prototype, and I think in, in an interview he even said Princess Crown 2 was Odin Sphere, but there could be some li licensing things in there uh, that didn't allow that to become the name, but not sure. Unfortunately, because of the lack of an English translation, this is a game that has been kind of swept under the rug for us in the West for a long time. There isn't a ton of information that is easily accessible. It's also, since it did so poorly in terms of sales, it's just a very niche game, a bit obscure. But hopefully now that an English translation has been made, this will start to change a little bit. It isn't perfect, as this is apparently an earlier version of the English patch that will be fixed up in the future. So. Keep in mind that it'll have various errors, for example, the width of the text is off due to the way that um, it was originally. That can cause some issues with the menus. Things like items and names of places don't necessarily have translations yet. The bulk of the text is translated, so NPCs, parts of the story, things like that are in English, though there are parts that may be jumbled such as in the initial combat tutorial, a bug that'll probably get fixed up later on. But having the ability to play through the whole game in English is huge, and I'm really excited to go through it myself and experience it. It's actually pretty long for this style of game too. Game length seems to be anywhere from 30 hours to a decent amount more than that, up to maybe even 50 hours, depending on whether you do a lot of the side activities. I would say I would suggest anyone that is interested, go and give it a try yourself. Thanks for watching.